Hello again. This is Altalena, and welcome back to an aesthetic education. The original intent for today's episode was to explore the aesthetic philosophy of Plato and Aristotle before briefly diving into some examples from the world of ancient Greek art. What became clear very quickly was that to discuss these two philosophers with all their works, all their beliefs, and their influence on aesthetics to such an extent would require more time and consideration than I really had available this past week. So we will have to return to the world of the ancient Greeks at some later point. In the meantime, and in the spirit of this holiday season, where everyone needs to find a sense of humor somewhere, we will be exploring the comic world of satire through the work of the great British caricaturist, Thomas Rawlinson. So without further ado, let's get started with episode two, The Virtue of a Sense of Humor, 18th Century Satire and the Art of Thomas Rawlinson. Satire is defined as the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other topical issues, and serves as a mirror of our society, culture, and the people in it. During the 18th and early 19th centuries, satire was widely used in literature and art. Authors like Henry Fielding, Richard Brinsley Sheridan, and Jane Austen all employed satire to humorously point out the flaws and eccentricities of the times they lived in. In 2015, the Queen's Gallery staged an exhibition entitled High Spirits, the Comic Art of Thomas Rawlinson. The exhibition explored the humorous and satirical artwork of Thomas Rawlinson and other great 18th century caricaturists. Noted for his political satire and social observation, Rawlinson was a prolific artist and printmaker. He produced a large number of illustrations that appeared in contemporary novels, humorous books, and topographical works. Like many of his contemporaries, his caricatures were robust and bawdy and left little to the imagination. A letter from His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, appeared in the catalog produced for the exhibition. In this letter, His Royal Highness pointed out that not all artists have the appropriate sense of humor to illustrate humor, and many humorists lack artistic talents to do so. But caricaturists are in a class of their own, and Thomas Rawlinson was a leader of that class. As far as caricaturists are concerned, His Royal Highness pointed out that there are two sides to that art form, the caricaturist and the subject of his work. To be the subject of a caricaturist's work, one needed a sense of humor. To that extent, the Duke observed that the subjects of Rawlinson's cartoons needed a pretty robust sense of humor. The exhibition provided many examples of how Rawlinson employed the full vocabulary of satire to comment on the events and characters in the world around him. Of the many illustrations that appeared in this exhibition, I have selected three to illustrate as wide a range as possible of the kind of satire employed by Rawlinson and his contemporaries to comment on the times in which they lived. Our first illustration, entitled The Bookseller and Author, which is attributed to Henry Wigstead, Rawlinson's friend and artistic ally, is a classic look at late 18th century life. The figure on the right appears to be an exasperated author who has received some negative feedback on his latest work from the bookseller in the middle. The other man in the corner is presumably a customer, rousing the bookstore and perhaps listening to a conversation that should remain private. The difference in stature between the bookseller and author indicates who is in control of this conversation. The bookseller, who appears to be well-fed and prosperous, has a haughty facial expression. He has imparted negative feedback to authors in the past and doesn't care about the author's feelings. 
The author, in contrast, is hunched over with his hat tucked under his arm in a much more defensive position. One can feel the anger that the author feels about the negative critique of his work. The brilliance and humor of this piece lies in the easy to imagine conversation with verbal humor akin to the best works of Oliver Goldsmith. One thinks particularly of his classic play, She Stoops to Conquer. Let schoolmasters puzzle their brain with grammar and nonsense and learning. Good liquor, I stoutly maintain, gives genius a better discerning. Our second illustration comes from the height of the Regency crisis of 1788, when there was much uncertainty about the suitability of the Prince of Wales, the future King George IV, as to whether he would make a good king. Rawlinson adds to this debate with his beautiful, sad, and entertaining piece entitled A Touch on the Times. He makes use of speech balloons akin to those used in comics and a lot of pointed symbolism to make his points clear and accessible to all who would have seen this illustration at the time. The illustration is focused on the prince walking up to a cracked and damaged throne with the assistance of a hooved Britannia. Fox, a supporter of the prince regent, is depicted holding dice boxes and a cudgel in place of liberty and justice. The perception of the failing values that have been the foundations of Britain appear to be broken and on the verge of collapse. The removal of liberty, the corruption of commerce, and the fires of rebellion all threaten the throne of virtue. William Pitt, bitterly opposed to the Regency in Fox, is seen attempting to put out the fires that threaten the throne. The key success behind this piece is Rawlinson's ability to use the symbols of state and the people to show the danger of the times they were living in. The haggard looks of commerce and the other background caricatures shows the differentiation in the style of the individual figures. Yet there is consistency in Rawlinson's use of defined lines and colors in the foreground, allowing the viewer to understand the contrasting ideas and complexities of the situation he is trying to get across. Our third and final illustration is perhaps Rawlinson's most famous. Dr. Convex and Lady Concave is an example of the use of satire based on appearance rather than a laughable situation. The comedy of these two caricatures comes in the form of their physical shape and social status. The doctor of a lower social class is large and physically invading the space of the lady. The lady is thin and wiry and a representation of the more subtle beauty of the upper class. Yet despite their differences, they are drawn together with their hands close to each other. This perceived intimacy, along with the entire shape of the rest of their bodies, may be Rawlinson's way to joke about a certain level of sexual intercourse between these two mismatched caricatures. The quote at the bottom of the print from the famous Elizabethan courtier Folks Greville says, Man is the only creature endowed with the power of laughter. Is he not also the only one that deserves to be laughed at? This quote tells the viewer that it is appropriate for them to laugh at this illustration, for that is the power of satire, to give people a moment of humor amongst the many tribulations of life. High Spirits, the comic art of Thomas Rawlinson, was a triumph of an exhibition that showed the work of a man who captured the events and feelings of the time period in which he lived through character, humor, and most importantly, satire. He succeeded, as the great Henry Fielding once said, as all great artists do, by displaying his work not as a gentleman who gives a private or eleemosynary treat, but rather as one who keeps a public ordinary at which all persons are welcome for their money.
If you enjoyed this show, please give us a follow on your preferred podcast listening platform, as well as on Instagram or Facebook, where you can find us under altalena.art. A transcript of this week's podcast, along with images of the illustrations mentioned, can be found on our website, altalena.art forward slash aesthetic education. Thank you very much for listening, and we look forward to welcoming you back real soon.